Calling to order the regular meeting of the Wheeling Plan Commission for Wednesday, July 13th, 2022. Please stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Commissioner Casper. Present. Commissioner Hyken. Here. Commissioner Berkey. Here. Commissioner Sprague is here. Commissioner Riles. Here. Commissioner Meyer. Here. Chairman Johnson. Here. Whew. <laughs> First time for a full roll call in a while. <laughs> Ms. Nyes, any changes to the agenda tonight? Yes, the petitioner for agenda item 7A has requested to be removed and um, they will return to the commission when they are ready. Very well. Then we can move right on because we have no consent items and no citizens' concerns and comments. So we can move on to docket number 2022-29A, rezoning from the R4 multifamily residential district to the MXT transit-oriented mixed-use zoning district or Wheeling Fire Station 42 at 135 McHenry Road. Mr. Secretary. The Village of Wheeling property owner seeks a rezoning from the R4 multifamily residential district to the MXT, transit-oriented mixed-use zoning district, pursuant to Title 19 zoning in the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19.14, Ordinance, Administration, and Associated Sections for the property located at 175 McHenry Road. A rezoning as defined in the zoning code is an amendment to the map and or text of the zoning ordinance to effect a change in the nature, density, or intensity of uses allowed in the zoning district and or in a designated parcel of land area. In order to be considered for rezoning, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Planning Commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how the proposed zoning is desirable in the village and is compatible with the and contributes to the surrounding land uses and zoning. Prior to a public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that their request meets the standards for a rezoning as established in Title 19. The Commission Chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting materials submitted, the Planning Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. Ms. Nye, is there anything on this before we hand it over to the petitioners? Uh, no, just maybe we'll go over that there's mm, six, six items, items. <laughs> so we're going to do the rezoning first and take the vote, then we'll close it, we'll do the special use, take the vote, close it, then we'll do all the variances together, and then we'll do the site plan last. And, um, and we'll have to vote on each of the variances individually. Individually. Um, so. Maybe, I don't know, do you want, should they do their presentation now? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do it that way. Okay. Oh, then. Okay. You Thank you. Thank you all for having me here tonight. I'm Jamie um, Zara with a, okay. oh, sorry. I, because it's public oh, hearing, sorry. I have to swear you in. Yes. And anyone else that's going to speak? Dana May. Come on up here. <laughs> Even the boss. <laughs> You swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth? I do. All right, please state your name and business address for the record. Jamie Zara with 845 Design Group. It's 106 calendar court number 131 in LaGrange, Illinois. Jana, you need to. Jana Bryant with Pinnacle Engineering Group at 1051 East Main Street, uh, East Dundee, Illinois. Thank you. Michael McGrill, Wheeling Fire Chief, 499 South Milwaukee Avenue, Wheeling. Thank you. Now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Again, I'm Jamie Zara with 845 Design Group. I'm the architect working on fire station number 42. And this is Jana. She is the civil engineer that's also working on this. So if you have any civil related questions, she can answer them. So first I'm gonna start off, this is the proposed 3D elevation. Um, let's see, can I just go forward? Great. So this is the site plan. Uh, I'll start off 
with the things that we're here asking for tonight, because there's several. So the first one is we cannot build the fire station as it's currently zoned, because it's currently zoned as residential and the adjacent property is MXT. So that's why the request is going through right now for MXT zoning. On the variation side, we are requesting three variations. One is to reduce the North Green Belt from six feet to five feet. So now can you, they see when I'm yes. using? Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so that would be this portion up here. Right now it's five feet from the property line and the village code requires six feet. So there's several reasons why we cannot do that. This property is very deceiving. There's a lot on it. There's this very large area that's actually floodplain area that we cannot build on without going through several hoops and contacting many federal government agencies. There's also the water tower on this property. There's a ComEd uh, accessory building. There are many utilities related to the water tower that are on this space, and ComEd currently has an access drive that's running along that north property line to the north uh, side of the property. So if we shifted the parking lot down, we would be in utilities that we cannot relocate. So the other solution would be to squeeze in the drive aisles in this area, and then we would be coming to you for another variation because then we would not meet the code, which is 25 feet, for the drive aisles in this parking lot. So that is the reason we're asking for the green belt variation. The second variation we're requesting is to reduce the north parking lot setback from 10 feet to 5 feet, and that's the same reasoning. We would have to squeeze this drive aisle, and then it would be 20 feet, which would not be as conducive to parking, pulling out in spaces, and we would also be requesting a variation because that would not meet the village code of 25 feet. The third variation we're requesting is for this drive aisle that will not only be used by staff parking and village parking, but also by ComEd because they will be accessing the building on site, and Public Works would also be potentially here to utilize the building for whatever reasons. And then if there's any work on the water tower, that's what these spaces would be used for. And reducing this drive, well, currently the drive is 18 feet. So we'd be maintaining the same width as we currently do. If we expanded it to the 25 feet, we would have to move the building south. And then we would be in the floodplain zone, which then we would have to talk to FEMA and all the other government agencies that would require us to allow us to build on this site, which could take months to years before we get approvals for this. So those are, that's the reasoning for those three variations and the hardships that we're experiencing on this site. And I did want to mention that this site is, uh, it would be difficult to develop the site into anything else besides this building. If we wanted to look at retail or restaurants, there's really not the space to account for parking and the building and also the, the additional requirements for storage and impervious surfaces. Well, okay. So the landscape plan, this is the landscape plan, we're going to utilize a lot of the same plants that we have at station 23 now. Um, we're trying to maintain the existing trees, there's some really nice trees along the property line here and that separate the residents from the property and that's why this drive is also pulled back slightly. And we're adding landscaping on the, the area where the generator is, the trash enclosure, and then this is the, actually the main entrance to the building. So there's landscaping here, and the flagpoles will be located at the front of the building, which was a suggestion uh, by the building department, because we were initially looking at placing the flagpoles by the monument sign, but it was suggested to move them away from the building to keep them away from the residents. So we moved the, the flagpoles in this area. These are the 2D renderings, the proposed materials. And I can pull these out. <coughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are looking at using the stone, which would be on the front elevation and then a portion of the side elevation. So this is the apparatus area. So it would die at the same height as the bay doors, and then it would come around the corner slightly, and then this would be this real stone material. This is batten board, it would be fiber cement board. It's heavy. Um, so the, this would be the style above the doors, but the, the color would actually be this color. I don't know if I can see it too, sorry. Um, I know it's kind of heavy. <laughs> and then 
Uh, the red would be the same red that we use at station uh, 23 to for the doors and then the spiral cement above the, the central door. And then this elevation would be the main entrance elevation. So this is all the apparatus space. You can see the stone here and then there'll be some clear story windows up here just to get light into the bay. And then this is the main entrance. There's some office space and uh, there's the living quarters in this area. And so this material is also fiber cement. It would be this color at the entrance just to break it up because it is a long elevation and we really had to squeeze it to get on the site which made it a little bit elongated. So we're trying to break it up and add um, aesthetics to it. And then this color would be the siding that would be at the base of the building. So above it would be that same batten board with that, this color, that cobblestone color above and then the khaki color would run across it. And we decided to also to break up the elevation to use a standing seam metal roof and then asphalt shingles elsewhere to, to salvage some costs here because the uh, standing seam, although it's beautiful and has a long life, it is very expensive. And there were also some complaints at station 23 of hearing the rain on them. <laughs> so we thought we would minimize it a little bit. Uh, so this side here is uh, more living quarters area. There's a, a patio that's, that's um, recessed and not visible to the public at all. And then these two fencing areas would be the composite fencing, which is this, uh, similar to a Trex material. And that would be for the generator and the trash enclosure. And then this, this is just an example of A little different, a little larger, chunkier um, siding. I think that's all the finishes. And then this would be the elevation that the fence is adjacent to the, re the residential side. And it would just be the siding and then the batten board above with the shingles. And then these are also the, the samples that I've brought here and the colors. And then the glazing would be the darker bronze color for the frame. This is an example of uh, what we did at 23. And just an example to see a visual, this is the batten board and then the siding, the fiber cement. And these are the 2D elevations which are very similar to the 3D which have all the materials keys here as I just discussed. So uh, this is station 23 and we're proposing the same signage above the central door which is the backlit. So this is it at night and then during the day. This is the fencing which is that composite fence that we talked about the eight feet for the generator height and the six feet for the trash enclosure. For lighting, also this will be very similar to station 23. These are the up and down lights that would flank the apparatus doors and then these would be at every man door entrance and the main entrance. And these fixtures would be in the ground for the flag poles and this would be the parking lot fixture and then this is the section cut of those light fixtures that would be in the ground lighting the flag poles. Okay, I think this, oh, this is the photometric plan that would, was added, um, which just provides that there is no light level past uh, the property line, at the property line or past the property line. I just added some extra okay. ones that you had. Okay. <laughs> so I think that's all um, I had to say about any of this. So if you have any questions, please let me know and I will try to answer them or Jana or the chief will. Very good, thank you. Thank you. All right, so let me get back to my notes here. So our first one is just to discuss and vote on <clears throat> the rezoning. So I will just ask the commission if anyone has any questions regarding that instead of going person by person. Um, to my right, um, any questions on the rezoning? Commissioner Casper? No. Nobody else down there to my left? No questions? <coughs> then I would entertain a motion to approve. Um, so moved. 
Second. Second. Did you get it? Commissioner Hyken and Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Casper? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Now we need a motion to close 2022-29A. So moved. Second. What was that? Marty? Yes. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Casper? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. All right, next up is 2022-29B, special use to permit construction of a new public safety facility for Wheeling Fire Station 42. Mr. Secretary. The Village of Wheeling property owner is seeking special use approval as required in Town 19 zoning in the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-10. Use regulations and associated sections in order to permit the construction of a new public safety facility for Fire Station 42 located at 175 McHenry Road. A special use is defined in the zoning code as a use of parcel of land that requires review and consideration before approval due to the potential for negative impacts on surrounding properties. In order to be considered for a special use, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the plan commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how the proposed use will not damage the enjoyment or use of the surrounding properties. Prior to public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that the request meets the standards for a special use as established in Title 19. The commission chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting materials submitted, the plan commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the village board. Thank you. Ms. Nye, anything in addition on this one? Uh, nope, there's no special conditions requested and the uh, staff is good with everything. Okay, and as petitioners, is there anything you want to add specific to the special use? No, not at this time, thank you. Okay. Uh, again, we're just talking about the special use at this point. So, uh, again, I'll look down to my right and see if there's any questions. Nope. Nope. And to my left. Commissioner Sprague has one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just, I was wondering, when you guys get calls and you have to leave, are your sirens going right away when you leave the, uh, I'm worried about the residents and sure. the, the noise from the sirens. Sure, anytime you put a fire station near a residence, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have noise when we're pulling out. For the most part, we don't, we don't hit the sirens or the horns when you're pulling out the driveway, we're making sure if it's clear, say if it's midnight and there's no cars coming, we wouldn't. Yeah. Those are all uh, manually activated. So okay. no, they don't keep going. And we're also looking to see if we can get some signage out there, mm -hmm. maybe flashing lights so when we do get a call, and it'll keep the traffic from coming back. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. I, I just had a question in, in general. Uh, why that site? As far as your coverage and everything? Well, it's a village-owned site. So that's, that's number one. <clears throat> and there wasn't a, a whole lot of other options. There were a few, but it didn't pan out. And, and, and this is to replace what you're keeping in this building? Right now we have a crew running out of the police station. And that will replace them. And like you had asked, uh, they'll be re they'll be moved out of that station. So there isn't four stations; there'll be three. Okay. Uh, that was my only question. Um, if there's no others, I would entertain a motion to approve 29B. So, so moved. moved. Second. That was Berkey. Berkey. That was Berkey. <laughs> It's hard to tell which we, one. We got to break you two up. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Casper. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Commissioner Meyer. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. And now a motion to close 2022-29B. So moved. Second. Casper and Meyer. Commissioner Casper. Yes. Commissioner Meyer. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Now we.
we have the three variations being requested. We'll open all three for discussion at one time, but of course we have to vote on them individually when we're done. So, Mr. Secretary. The Village of Wheeling property owner is seeking a variation as required in Title 19 zoning in the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-05, Mixed Use District General Requirements and Associated Sections to reduce the minimum parking setback from 10 feet to 5 feet in order to permit the construction of a new public safety facility for Wheeling Fire Station 42 located at 175 McHenry Road. The Village of Wheeling property owner is seeking a variation as required in Title 19 zoning in the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 1911, General Development Standards and Associated Sections to reduce the minimum drive aisle width from double row parking spaces from 25 feet to 18 feet in order to permit the construction of a new public safety facility for Wheeling Fire Station 42 located at 175 McHenry Road. The Village of Wheeling property owner is seeking a variation as required in Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-11, <coughs> General Development Standards and Associated Sections to reduce the minimum green belt width from six feet to five feet on the north property line in order to permit the construction of a new public safety facility for Wheeling Fire Station 42 located at 175 McHenry Road. A zoning variation is intended to be a method of adjustment to equalize regulations where the zoning code has created an unnecessary hardship. A variation is designed to allow affected property owners the same rights and privileges that others enjoy in the same zoning district. In order to be granted a variation, a petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Planning Commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the Village Code, including, but not limited to, how their individual situation is unique or unusual. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that the request for variation meets the standards established in Title 19. The Commission Chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting material submitted, the Planning Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. You can take a rest now. Mm -hmm. I will. <laughs> uh, and a drink. Ms. Nye, anything <laughs> on the variations? Um, uh, no. Staff supports all three variations. All right. And they were all explained to us already. Um, I'm kind of surprised that we didn't get any neighbors out on this, but that's a good thing, I guess. And if I could qualify my response to your question, sure. why that spot too? It's more than just the village owns it. We needed to put a fire station and a response on the northwest side of town, on the other side of tracks. And being on McHenry Road, that's what. That's why it's a it's a, a site that would better serve the community, especially if we do get more development up towards Lake Cook Road on McHenry. And the development that's here, it's getting crowded trying to respond there. Sure. So that's truly the reason why we're there, but it is, just happens to be owned by the village. Thank you. All right. Um, again, I will ask the commission if they have anything on any of these variations that they would like to bring up. To my right. Nope. And to my left. Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my question is um, related to the drive aisle variation. Did you reach out to ComEd at all as far as what they might require? We did speak to ComEd and we also spoke to waste management about that and both of them were fine with that width. And that is the current width of the drive aisle that they mm -hmm. use now. Okay. All right, great. That's all I have. Okay. What I don't think I see on, on the drawings anywhere is where that access to the substation ties in. So let me see if you, it's difficult to see on here. Let me see. Oops. Can I go backwards? Or can you go backwards? Um, I can go. Which one do you want to go to? Uh, the civil one. The, I think it's the second slide. Yeah, okay. Or third, third slide. It was a little slow. It's right, yeah, it's hard to see. The lines aren't very heavy here. So it does connect, and it's shown as existing. That's why it's so light. Oh. Okay. But it does connect off of here. It's just hard to see it. Here, I can show you. 
It's just the very east end of that drive, isn't it? This right, and that drive extends okay. into the field behind because ComEd has a building back in there. Yeah. So but the don't, high line. don't they have a substation yeah. to the north of yeah. there? It should be they clear. Have the power lines over here, but there's not another station. That's, right? there's, yeah, there's, there's, a yeah, there's a substation. Yeah, there's a substation back there. It's at the end of this one. It's at the end of this one. Oh, it's here. Right. Yeah. Oh. Gates are, gates are right there. Okay. This, yeah, that one. I was looking at the map or the aerial photo before. Look different. See, it looks like it's over here. Right, here's the drive from McHenry Road. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this little drive right here. Yeah. Okay. It's our it's the end of the okay. Right so there's more road. Yeah, it go kind of. Okay, it goes northeast. Back yeah. That road continues back. Yeah, it curves. Okay, but that's all tied in, and they're good with that? Yes. All right. Um, if there's no other questions on the variations, we can move on to voting on each one. Motion on 2022-29C. So moved. Second. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Commissioner Casper? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. And now we need a motion to close that one. 29C. So moved. Second. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Casper? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. Now a motion on 2022-29D. So, so moved. Second. Commissioner Casper. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Commissioner Meyer. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. And now a motion to close 29D. <laughs> so moved. Second. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Casper? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. And the final variance, a motion to approve 2022-29E. So, so moved. moved. Well, second. Your call. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Commissioner Casper? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. And a motion to close, 29E. So, so moved. moved. Second. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Casper? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> The most voting we've done in a long time. <laughs> and we're not done. <laughs> and we're not done. <laughs> and finally, we have docket 2022-29F, the major site plan and building appearance approval for Wheeling Fire Station 42 at 135 McHenry Road. This part is not a public hearing. And this one does it's have nice. a proposed condition, but um, it has been addressed. So... The condition was that the plan should be revised to include landscaping within the parking lot islands and also the trash enclosure with landscape screening prior to the village board meeting. So the trash enclosure has been screened. The parking lot islands, uh, per the petitioner, it's unsure what they're going to be able to do with them. Um, what sh you want to explain? Yeah, sure, I <laughs> yeah, can explain. explain. So there's storage underground um, for the site, and based on the, the floodplain levels and the building height, we're not exactly sure, because we haven't done all the final engineering yet, where that's going to sit and how much soil will be in those islands. So that'll determine what kind of plants we can put in there, because we're not going to put something in there that's going to die. So we can't determine right now what will be in those islands. Because if we have a deeper depth, we'll obviously do something different than if it's really shallow. If it's too shallow, what would it be? Would it just be stone or? I don't know. I mean, do you know? I mean, if it's not landscaping, what would it be? 
I mean, it'll have at least grass in it, worst oh, case, oh, okay. or some smaller growing plants that can grow in about six inches of topsoil. Okay. So there will be something alive there, yes. we yes. hope. <laughs> at least starting out. Until ComEd <laughs> drives over it. Yeah, <laughs> until somebody drives over it. So I just suggest we remove this condition because the trash, the landscape screening for the trash enclosure is on the plan that they showed us tonight. Okay. So this is just regarding the islands. And it's not going to be resolved by the board meeting. Yeah, you're you're And gonna... they're not going to put nothing in the island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll you'll put whatever you can. Mhm. Mm so that's my suggestion. Okay, yeah, I think you can remove that. Okay. We don't need to vote on that, do we? If maybe if anyone has an objection. Any to objections to removing no. the condition? No. No. None. Strike it. Okay. Um, any more from your side on the actual building and site plan? No, not unless you have any questions for me. We may. Uh, this time we'll go one by one. Commissioner Casper, anything? No. Commissioner Hyken? No, thank you for a complete package, though. Very comprehensive. Uh, Commissioner Berkey? No questions. Thanks. Commissioner Sprague? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I also would like to thank you on the packet. It was very informative and took away a lot of questions that we could have been asking. Uh, that's thank, all I thank have. Thank Marcy, too. <laughs> Thanks, Marzi. <laughs> uh, yes, Commissioner Kyle. Riles. No questions, thank you. And Commissioner Meyer. Well done, no questions. Thank you. Yes, it's great when a packet all comes together. <laughs> um, water retention. You said you're having an underground storage system. You weren't going to get away with that talking about that. So the site's got floodplain. Because of MWRD and village requirements, we are required to provide detention and volume control. So we're putting it or proposing it underground in like a storm trap type system, preliminarily anyway, how underneath big, the parking lot. How big is that? Oh, okay. It's, you can kind of see a little hatched area up here that's under the parking lot. Oh, okay. We're putting it kind of here. And the final geometry of it will be figured out once we have the final calculations done with final engineering. Okay. Um, you've taken out a lot of trees. Are, are you putting any shrubs along that fence line to help reduce the noise? And we're we're trying to maintain the trees that are along the property line, but we do not have any shrubs going in there right now. But if you, I don't know if you've seen the site, but the trees on the site are very large and yes. do help shield it quite a bit. Okay. Well. Yes, yeah, and there's a, there's a large there's a large eight foot fence between the residents and this property. That's eight foot. Okay. Yeah, and Comed was utilizing that drive before. All right. Uh, any other questions? Marcy, anything from you? Um, no. We didn't miss anything. All right. Then I would like to hear a motion to approve uh, 29, what are we up to, F? <laughs> so moved. Second. Second. I'm not sure who. Go ahead. I, 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 <laughs> Berkey and Riles, or uh, Berkey and uh, Hyken. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Casper. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. All right. Now they're done. Now you are done. Thank you, Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Together as a presentation. Yes, and good luck. Thank you. It makes things so much easier. <laughs> Approval of minutes. Approval of minutes of the regular meeting of June 22nd, 2022, including the findings of fact for docket number 2022-26 and 2022-27. I hear a motion. 
So moved. Second. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Casper? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Other business? Ms. Nyes, anything? Um, I do not have anything. Nothing. Kyle, what's happening with engineering? We didn't get a chance to talk tonight. Um, nothing, nothing really new. Um, Wolf Road, as I, I, I was assuming that there would be a question about Wolf Road, yeah. so <laughs> I figured I'd kind of give an update. So they just moved over to phase three of, of the construction out there. So as you probably realized, at least on the south side of Dundee Road, they've switched the traffic configuration. I think that was last week. Uh, so now they're starting to do the curb and sidewalk on the west side of the road, south of Dundee. So that kind of, once that's done, um, it's pretty much just restoration, um, and and then the project will kind of be coming to a close. So I know we're kind of in the home stretch here. It's been a long project, three years in the making, um, but uh, the end's in sight. So <laughs> great. What about the uh, entrances? There's a couple entrances still to the neighborhoods that aren't done. Are they, when are they going to finish those? We're running into some problems. Uh, there's a, apparently a quarry strike, so we're having trouble getting aggregate stone oh. basically for asphalt and concrete. Um, so this took this started probably uh, end of June. Um, so asphalt and concrete su supply has been uh, hard to come by. Mm. So that's why some of these are taking a little longer um, to wrap up than we, than we expect. Thanks. Anything else going on around that? Uh, Union, Union Apartments is uh, broke ground this week, so yep. yeah, um, off some, of Wheeling Road there. So um, some activity over there. Yeah, they're moving along. They got quite a bit of water main installed. The sanitary sewer connection has been made, so plugging away. Great, thank you, yep. um, Commissioner Casper. Anything for other business? No, sir. Commissioner Hyken. Uh No, just uh, our hearts and thoughts and prayers are to those our neighbors in Highland Park. Commissioner Berkey. Uh, no, but I uh, think that was a good uh, statement. Uh, second, the uh, thoughts and prayers to Highland Park and hope uh, hope everyone, you know, recovers soon from, from this. Commissioner Sprague. Nothing for me, thank you. Commissioner Riles. Nothing, thank you so much. And Commissioner Meyer. Nothing further, thank you. All right, and I have nothing under other business either. So, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Two ends. Yes. Voice. Um, oh, no. Well, who are you giving the second to? Uh, Casper. My name is Casper. Right? Yes. Yeah. Casper. Casper. Good Meyer and Casper. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. I'm a good voice. I'm a good voice. I'm a good voice. I thought it was one of those.